Hey guys, this is Tyler here. I'm going to talk about these MAME stock squeezes, okay? Most of my content, of course, is dedicated to MGTOW kind of content in other areas of this nature, but here I'm going to discuss the stock market. And people here may know this is my main source of income. So I, t I understand the market, the nature of the market, and all the trends exceptionally well. So these MAME stocks we've seen in the past four or five months, like GameStop and AMC, BlackBerry, Nokia, among others. And it's just incredible what Reddit and these other kind of block platforms have done for the stock market. The number of retail traders that have poured into the market and will trade these stocks. And often these stocks don't have the fundamental value behind it to justify such high prices. When we look at like AMC just a month ago, it's around $4. Um, it had moved up to like 16 or maybe over $20 three months ago, and then it dropped down again to like four or $5. And then it started its, its move again about a month ago, and it's around 70 to $80 range. Could make a massive return here. And many people, may say tell you don't ever trade meme stocks i would disagree here and i i think there's so many misunderstandings about the market i i mean this is sounds cliche to say but many of the quotes and sayings about the market were based on old paradigms of 20 15 25 years ago that are not relevant today this was in an era when there wasn't high speed internet widely accessible there weren't the really good quality broker platforms like Trade Zero, Lightspeed, that have these really sophisticated and really quick, like direct access brokering. There wasn't all the available information like stock tweets and other places you could go and find like um, trending stocks or Finbiz and, and get kind of ideals on people's idea of the these stocks there just wasn't all the market was just it, it was just a, a different animal most people at the, historically were just doing like swing trading or long-term investments and sometimes even in the 90s i remember my dad would call into his broker through a phone to make trades imagine that calling in i sometimes make trades in sockets i can't imagine calling in so all these areas it was completely different in the market now people there's I think there is a large number of people unsuccessful with day trading, but I would argue and I th I would think the percentages have really um, gone up, except in cases of like the options market. People who are trading like option contracts, this is like, I mean, when you're trading like 100 or so times leverage, this is just crazy. And, and a lot of the like massive losses, if you look into the stock losses, what you'll find, I would say about 80 to 90% of the time, it's either when people are shorting the market or shorting stocks, or they're trading option contracts. Yeah, I, I always tell people option contracts is like gambling, or it's the closest thing to it. To effectively trade options long term, you, I mean, you gotta be like a savant level trader. You, it, it is ridiculously hard. Now, if you trade for, for bull momentum, and you understand what you're doing and trade on fundamentals, I think it's way easier to be successful. And also you have a good broker, you quick speed broker, you have, um, you've practiced a lot. There also, um, another big thing, a lot of traders don't mention this, is that you really want to use between like, I, I think people should use more of the five to 10 minute time frames when they're trading. Often people use like these 20 second or one minute time frames, and I don't trade like that. This actually is quite different than a lot of the day traders out there. Why you have to use five minute time frames is because oftentimes the stock it will it will flush and then it goes back and then it flushes again, but it may have slow trajectory up. When you look at the you look at overall. Uh, upward trend that's kind of the main point here and even like the small cap medium cap stocks with a lot of volatility like amc they have this kind of pattern I'll, I'll give you an example everyone here i was day trading amc yesterday and at pre-market i was up around five thousand dollars 
um, it was a big position. It was like a $29,000 position I had taken on AMC. And I did not sell. And, and then the stock, um, it dropped. And I, by like, almost by market open, I was nearly at zero. When market open and it flushed, I was down $2,200. And then it slowly dipped back up like over the next five or 10 minutes. And Porch, I didn't panic sell because I, every stock has a story. And when you get good enough at understanding patterns, you can effectively understand the story behind the stock movement. And I could tell it was going to be very green on the day. A few things, like for example, when you you look at stocks, look at like pre-market. How high does it get pre-market? In this case, it got up to over 40% pre-market. So I had a pretty good idea that this stock would probably get up to 40% at some point during the day. And if it got past that, it would go a lot higher, which it did. It ended up going up like 115%. So I was very patient. I eventually got to break even. And then I got up to like $2,200 um, over like the next 40 minutes. And that's actually where I ended up selling at. Unfortunately, if I had waited and just held my position longer for like an hour or two, I would have been up like um, ten to fifteen thousand dollars. That that was the day trade, mind you. See, the thing is, is that I focus more on following rules um, in the market, and often what happens is the market will have flushes. Once you get past the first hour, hour and a half, you'll have these flash flushes of ten to fifteen percent drop downs. It's huge, especially on really volatile days, and you could be up like ten percent and then be like going to the red by 5% with like a 15% flush down. So these kind of rules are important to practice, like just aim for 10, 15, 20% gains and then sell, um, and then look for another setup and then buy in again. That's kind of my perspective. I mean, a lot of traders still don't shoot for such large numbers. Um, my style's a little different. A lot of traders will only shoot for a, a few to 5% like the scalpers. I don't trade like this. Um, this style of shooting for longer time frames with bigger gains usually, this usually works better for me. But going back like with the whole day trading is that this is another thing, people have opinion on everything. They, they, they may not have been successful with it. And this is a hard thing with day trading is that often initially you have to be willing to lose a lot of money. You, you may lose like 20 or 30 grand when you're learning and then eventually you go back up and then you go back up and you're way green and you're making very solid returns each month. But unfortunately, when you're learning often, you have to be willing to lose some. The emotions, the psych, this is the most difficult thing in, in the market. It sounds, it's very cliche, but truthfully, your emotions have to be so controlled. And like um, yesterday even, I mean, I've been in this position before where I've been down a couple grand, but you cannot panic. And like when you're first starting, this is why a lot of day traders lose money because they have drawdowns of like a few hundred dollars, not like a couple thousand, like, or $4,000. I mean, we're talking only a hundred, two hundred dollars, maybe 500 and then they sell, they panic sell. They're not looking at, like, at long enough frames, like five or 10 minute frames, and they can't see the whole trade out. So this is one of the big issues, or they, um, or they simply hold the trade too long, um, even if it, when it has a downward trending movement, and that probably comes to not being able to read the pattern effectively, and then they take a big loss, either of these cases. But this is, this is how the market works. So people often, run through all their liquidity all their money before they've really mastered the art of trading that's i i think one of the main reasons why why people like lose in the market or they're just better off as holding like swing trading or investments because some people psychologically they they just cannot get into the mindset of what it takes it's it's very, exceptionally challenging i mean when you look at most of the major like fund managers quant traders often a lot of them tend to come from like Scandinavia, Germanic countries, maybe some East Asians. That's where a lot of them are concentrated from. And when you think about the characteristics of those people, it makes sense. I mean, when, I mean, in terms of not letting emotions drive 
their decision making and, and being very focused on the fundamentals, it's it's critical in the market. And as time goes on, your thresholds also go up. Like when I first started, I the very max I could trade was like five or maybe seven thousand dollar trades, but often not even five. We're talking like three to five. I um, mean, I was losing often then, so I had to reduce to a, one to two thousand. Now I can trade up to like twenty to thirty thousand dollar trades because my thresholds go up. Once your confidence goes up, you have more confidence in your abilities. You're able to make bigger trades and obviously have bigger gains also. Um, but you also, of course, have to be very quick to cut losses if if it's going the wrong way. But I think it's best to focus more on quality setups that most of the time will work out because sometimes people jump into trades real. So like with AMC or these main stocks, people might ask, so wh when do I get into these trades? Like how do I know when, when a good entry point is? There's a lot of counterintuitiveness often in the market and what I would always recommend just like with Bitcoin is wait for draw drawdowns in the market, wait for there to be a drop or even during the day, wait for there to be a large drop, like a flash drop and then buy in. Often you're always better off buying when the stock is dropping than when it's moving up. Now, if you do buy the when it's moving up, you probably, you're gonna have to understand that when the stock's really volatile, like yesterday with AMC, you buy in when it's moving up. For like a minute or a few minutes, you may, it may drop a bit from your purchase point and you could be down a bit and you have to see through that whole period until it goes back and then it continues upward. That's often how it works in the market. That's, like I said, one of the main reasons a lot of people why they, I think, lose is because immediately it drops and then they're not willing to see it through. And if it's an upward trend and it has, um, it's holding, it's like the volume weight moving average, if it's um, holding up, no reason the stock won't continue upward. So those are all psychological things also, as I mentioned before. But the main stocks, like I mentioned, Often people say they're way overhyped, they're too dangerous. I don't personally agree. Um, I think it's just understanding when it proper entry and when proper exit. Have a certain amount you're looking for and then sell. Take profit, always take profit when you can. You don't want to be up a lot on a stock and then just like um, miss out on profit. And don't read too much into Reddit or the other forums either. You do still want to look at the fundamentals and like, I said, when we look at stocks historically, like tech stocks and stuff, did a lot of these have the same ju justified valuations, the same, the share price, um, were, were those like fair prices? I don't think so. I think in history, the catalysts were just different than now, where like places like Reddit have a lot more influence. There's no, a lot of these stocks, one could argue to have a, this justified price 20 or 30 years ago. People will act like this is just something new. Well, there are, uh, there are other catalysts that cause stocks to go way higher than they probably should have been. And it all comes down to volume in the market. If that volume is there and there's enough traders that are driving that price up. And also another big thing with like GameStop, the share float of GameStop is around 50 million. That is really low for a stock that's being traded basically at the same level as Tesla, if not more. This is one of the big reasons why the price has maintained itself and it goes higher. And it won't drop down because it has a small, that's a very small float for the number of people trading. That's the number of available shares that can be traded in the market. AMC is much higher, higher float. It's around 400 million, I believe, but it's still a lot lower than stocks that would be traded at similar Lava like Tesla is at least twice as much or two and a half times that the float. So this is a big, big reason why the, the, these stocks have maintained their value so well. There's no reason if, if they continue to maintain popularity, I think they could certainly maintain a fairly high level. And also, like I said, these are excellent stocks to like st setups. If you're looking to like build your account, don't, don't get scared off from these, these setups. Because these, these kind of setups are, are going to get your account a lot bigger, a lot quicker than like say stocks that move a few percent in a day. It's just a matter of knowing when to get in and then when to get out. 
and they're great moves. If you get in low enough, like price basis, um, people got, got in like at 20 or $10 on AMC, then you could hold this like as a swing trade for a week or a few weeks and it's a massive gain. Um, but if you do that, you, you want to make sure your cost basis is really low on the stock um, so you don't sustain any major loss. So if anyone has questions on this, just qu comment and or send me an email. So give me your feedback and thank you.